this is auto tech uh, today we're going to have a little bit of a different one just because i couldn't do the filming in the shop so we're going to have a little bit of a slideshow about the only thing that this work fridge is good for is putting parts into it get the bearings in the freezer because it will make installing them a little bit easier let them sit in there for a couple of hours to remove this chain carrier or rear sprocket just simply lift up evenly on each side and it will just pop right up there is a spacer that goes in behind there so be careful that it doesn't fall out or at least pay attention to where it's going on a suitable work surface just simply pry up on this seal it'll pop right out underneath that seal you're going to find a snap ring it's best if you use snap ring pliers so that you da don't damage it and have to get a new one flip over the hub and sprocket assembly try to support it in such a way that you're not holding the weight on the sprocket and drive out that bearing you don't have to use a bearing driver like i am you can use a punch as well flip the hub back over grab one of the bearings out of the freezer that matches up with the one that you took out of it and use a suitable driver to drive it in you don't want to damage the actual inner race of it so be careful when driving it in once the bearing is fully seated, you will see the lip where the snap ring goes. Reinstall that snap ring. Personally, I pack the new seals with a little bit of grease. You don't have to. Simply using just your thumb or fingers, you can actually seat this seal and make sure it's flush with the edge. Take that spacer that you had removed out of there, clean it off really good, apply a little bit of assembly lube, and reinstall it. This rubber damper just lifts right out of your rim. Flip the rim over and being careful that you're not prying off your ABS ring, get that seal out of there. You'll find a snap ring underneath that seal. Using the same pliers as before, remove that snap ring. I'll be using a proper uh, bearing puller to remove mine. However, you can also use a punch and go all the way through the rim. Once the bearing is removed, you can easily remove the spacer that goes between the two bearings. I only use the puller on that first bearing. Afterwards, I drive out that second one. Head back to the freezer and grab one of the bearings that will match up with the wheel bearing that you removed. Drive it in on the snap ring side first. Once seated, reinstall that snap ring. Flip the wheel over, clean that spacer, apply a little bit of assembly lube to it, and slide it in there. Grab that final bearing out of the freezer and drive it into the wheel. Only go until it touches that um, spacer. If you hit it too hard, you're going to push that other bearing into the snap ring. You just want to lightly seat it. Flip the wheel back over. Personally, I use a little bit of grease when I'm installing the seal. Using just your fingers again, seat that seal until it is flush. Reinstall that rubber damper before you put your sprocket on. Take notice that this thing does lay a certain way. Be careful when installing this that the spacer in your sprocket carrier is properly there. And then just take your time and kind of slide it down into those rubber dampers and make sure it's properly seated. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen a freshly set of replaced wheel bearings, as well as the rear sprocket carrier bearing. I'm sorry that I couldn't make this into one of my usual how-to videos. However, I think I definitely got the information across in the slideshow. Let me know what you thought of this style here. Um, I know it wasn't ideal, but uh, shop rules, there's no filming in the shop. If you're new to this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for taking the time and watching.